All right, um, I was, I'm going to probably bail on that last thing because I think I'll just do this and then talk because the talking part is really what uh, the harder part is. But I'll do the song first so everyone knows there's something I can do. Uh, <laughs> I have to put my gum here. I'm going to remember to take it so the next person doesn't have to stick with it. But, uh, anyway, this is a song that I wrote, I believe, as a direct result of things being a little bit easier to write after uh, working with Ann Landau. jack-of-all-trades with the usual rejoinder after that. Um, actually, I looked at that when I wrote it, and I looked like jack-off-all-trades. 
<laughs> which was either someone who gives happy endings to working men at the end of their shifts, <laughs> or someone who spent a decent amount of time wanking it in both the literal and figurative sense. <laughs> uh, I once made a bet with a friend in the days I was sure that my talents would ensure at least a 35 degree angled rise to the top, <laughs> and hopped up on 70s and 80s human potential awareness and consciousness workshops that I would pay him 50 bucks if in 20 years I was still jacking off when I was 50. <laughs> now you understand when I said that I meant it in the metaphoric sense. I meant that I felt I was spinning my wheels now, then, but because of my persistence and talent, I certainly wouldn't be spinning my wheels then, now, and should be well, well ensconced into my fame and fortune in the music world by the time 20 long years had elapsed. Now, all these years later, I'm not sure if he's won the bet or not. Uh, I mean, I wasn't talking about the physical act, which since the internet is far more interesting and fun and easy. <laughs> uh, we won't mention Anthony Weiner, because that's all. <laughs> But successful men, don't pull a wiener. Just remember that. Um, oh. Thanks. I can be able to use that. But does the fact that I haven't, quote unquote, made it to where I envision myself in the showbiz mean that I've been jerking off instead of really working, that I've taken the easy way out? Oh. Now, I have done a bit of work, I feel compelled to say, so you won't think I'm, com I'm complaining, or that I'm a loser, or that I'm a complaining loser. <laughs> I made a good amount of money, bought a house, and raising a couple of children. But, to this day, no Tony, no Oscar, no House in the Hamptons, or parties with Mick on Moustique. <laughs> Mick Jagger, some singer that your parents liked. <laughs> but here I am, writing some of the best songs I've ever written, and more of them, performing them, and even having the gumption to talk a little about my life and or my thoughts in between them. And that's how I wound up here. I met Anne on stage when we were doing a show called Girly Magazine Party in L.A. The joke of the show is that it was a low-rent Playboy After Dark hosted by the publisher of Jaunt Magazine. Uh. It would be like if Judd's Magazine had spawned a media empire like Hugh Hefner's, but tackier. Uh. The show had been a revolving door for the best and most smartest comic performers in town. I did the musics on it so I didn't have to be as funny. Anne played a boozy floozy there amongst the swinging guys. As the evening progressed, there she was, legs splayed out, all <laughs> over the laps of two or three of the guys, torn nylons, dress straps falling every which way, a cigarette dangling from her mouth, smeared lipstick, a picture of slutty excess. Uh, some of the guys and I enjoyed looking up her dress, which seemed in character for what we were playing, seemed in keeping with who we were in real life. <laughs> That seemed to be totally what Anne's character had in mind. But she made the grotesque sexy. Uh, and even in that context, real. <laughs> then I saw her one woman show, Squeezebox in Loveland. Soon after, she came over to my studio with Josh to put together some sound effects for a show she was working on. I then got on a mailing list where she announced classes she was leading in one person shows. So I braved my own doubts and attended. I don't know if it made me a better writer, but I feel like a better writer. So I'm using it in service of what will ultimately become a show with my music and some shit I say in between. <laughs> I'm very grateful to Anne, and to all the truly great writers and voices in the class. I got very lucky when I walked in the first night. It was David Franco, Josh Townsend, me, and about 12 brilliant, funny, charismatic women. And I got to see and hear all of them in their amazing work one night a week for about three months. Even if I hadn't learned anything, it would still be a total win. Mm -hmm. But through writing and improv and her enthusiasm, she taught me how to mine that pile of crap in my head and find little gems to build upon, and I found that also made me a better songwriter, too. Well, at least I feel like I'm a better songwriter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.